Welcome to the second part of prerequisites for LTI systems. In the previous part, that is part number one, we revised all the conditions required for a system to be linear as well as time invariant. Now in this part, I will explain the use of Laplace transform in analyzing the LTI systems. And to understand this, I will take one system relationship in which yt is equal to xt minus 1 plus xt plus 1. This is the system relationship and you can verify whether this relationship is the relationship of a linear time invariant system or not. And when you verify from the conditions we have already seen, you will find it is the relationship of a linear time invariant system. And now we are interested in analyzing this system to comment about the other properties of the system. This relationship is in time domain, time domain. It is in time domain because all the signals or functions are having the variable t. You can see the variable is t in all the functions or signals and this variable t the variable in time domain which is t is a real variable it is a real variable now what if i say the analysis is much easier in frequency domain instead of analyzing in time domain if we analyze the system relationship in frequency domain it will be much easier for us so there is the other domain known as frequency domain and let me clear one thing here to understand or to comment about the other properties of the LTI system we need the impulse response we need the impulse response the impulse response is used to define the LTI system now what is impulse response the response means the output and impulse means the input so when you feed the impulse as the input to the LTI system you will get some output and this output is known as impulse response of the LTI system and we want to obtain this impulse response and it is difficult to obtain the impulse response in time domain so we want to go to frequency domain and in order to go to frequency domain we need some tool we need some tool to go to the frequency domain and the tool is known as Laplace transform. So we have the system relationship in the time domain and by using the Laplace transform, we will transform this relationship to the frequency domain. And once we have the relationship in frequency domain, we can easily obtain the impulse response. So there must be some rule or formula to find out the Laplace transform. Let's say there is a function in time domain ft and we want to find out the Laplace transform of this function. We want to find out the Laplace transform of this function. It is represented by L inside the curly braces, the function whose Laplace transform you are calculating. And it can also be written as capital F like this inside the bracket S. So in this case, in case of Laplace transform, after taking the Laplace transform, the function in time domain is now converted to the function in frequency domain. This S here is a complex variable. This is not real. It is complex variable and S is equal to sigma plus j omega. So here function is also complex. This function is also complex and the variable S is also complex. And I will write down the formula fs is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity the function ft multiplied to e raised to power minus st dt. For example, your function ft is equal to 2. It is a constant number or you can say it is dc and you are interested in finding out the Laplace transform of 2. So simply use the formula integration minus infinity to infinity 
2 in place of ft you will have 2 multiply to e raised to power minus st dt 2 is constant with respect to t so it will come out of integration you will have 2 integration minus infinity to infinity e raised to power minus st dt integration of e raised to power minus st is equal to 1 by minus s inside the bracket we will have e raised to power minus st the lower limit is minus infinity the upper limit is infinity now we will put the lower and upper limits here we have minus 2 over s e raised to power minus infinity minus e raised to power plus infinity e raised to power minus infinity will be equal to 0 and e raised to power infinity is equal to infinity and the overall result will also become infinity so to add some value instead of taking 2 we will multiply ut instead of 2 we will have 2 ut and the definition of function will now change it will be equal to 0 when t is less than 0 and it will be equal to 2 when t is greater than or equal to 0 so from minus infinity to 0 signal value is equal to 0 and from 0 to infinity the signal value is equal to 2 so we can change minus infinity to 0 because the function will have value equal to 0 from minus infinity to 0 and the integration of 0 is equal to 0 so there is no need to consider the range minus infinity to 0 because the integration of 0 will be equal to 0 so we will change the range and instead of infinity we will have 0 okay and here also we will have 0 so this infinity will now become 0 and e raised to power 0 is equal to 1 so we will have minus 2 over s multiplied to minus 1 so finally we are going to get 2 by s the Laplace transform of 2 ut it is equal to 2 over s and when you calculate the Laplace transform of ut you will get 1 over s and we can generalize it the Laplace transform of a ut is equal to a over s so this is one example in which I have shown how to calculate the Laplace transform. Now we will move back to our relationship y t equal to x t minus 1 plus x t plus 1. Using this formula we will calculate the Laplace transform and we will have y s the Laplace transform of output y t is represented by y s and it is equal to x s multiplied to e raised to power minus s plus x s multiplied to e raised to power plus s so now we have the relationship in frequency domain and we can easily find out the transfer function from here we can calculate the transfer function you must have heard this word transfer function the transfer function is represented by h s and it is equal to ratio of laplace transform of output to the Laplace transform of input considering all the initial initial conditions as zero this is the definition of transfer function we will discuss transfer function in detail but for now you should know the definition the transfer function is equal to Laplace transform of output over the Laplace transform of input considering all the initial conditions to be zero and we can easily find out y s over x s we will take x s common from the two terms this will give us y s equal to x s inside the bracket e raised to power minus s plus e raised to power s and the transfer function h s is equal to e raised to power minus s plus e raised to power s we have the transfer function and as we have the transfer function we can obtain the impulse response our prime aim is to obtain the impulse response and that's why we move to the frequency domain you can see it is very easy to find out the transfer function and from transfer function we can obtain the impulse response because the impulse response ht after taking the laplace transform gives us the transfer function 
and the transfer function after taking the inverse Laplace transform gives us the impulse response. So we are in frequency domain, we have this result in frequency domain and now we are interested in going back to the time domain. We have HS and with this HS we want to go back to the time domain. So let's go back to the time domain with the transfer function. And for this we will again use one tool and this tool is known as inverse Laplace transform. Finding out the inverse Laplace transform is not complicated. If you know the Laplace transform you can find out the inverse Laplace transform. For example, if the Laplace transform of a function is equal to 1 by s, this is the Laplace transform and we want to find out the inverse Laplace transform. This means we want to find out the function itself. The inverse Laplace transform will give you the function whose Laplace transform you are having. And we already know 1 by s is the Laplace transform of ut. So inverse Laplace transform will give you ut. So this is the process and we have hs equal to e raised to power minus s plus e raised to power s. And the inverse Laplace transform of e raised to power minus s is equal to delta t minus 1 and the inverse Laplace transform of e raised to power s is equal to delta t plus 1 and we will add them. So this is the impulse response ht of the system given here. So this is the complete process and from this we can comment about the other properties of the system. So I hope you now understand the whole process, the use of Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform. And don't worry about the inverse Laplace transform and the Laplace transform because there is one complete chapter based on the Laplace transform. We will understand what is Laplace transform, what are its properties, region of convergence, etc. For now you should only know the important Laplace transforms the Laplace transforms and inverse Laplace transforms of some important signals and I will provide you the complete list on our forum. You will find the link in the description. So just read them once and try to remember the transforms because using one transform you can obtain different results. For example, in this particular case, the inverse Laplace transform of e raised to power minus s is equal to delta t minus 1. This clearly indicates the Laplace transform of delta t minus 1 is e raised to power minus s. And let's say you know this transform. So if I give you a function ft and it is equal to delta t minus 2, then you can easily find out the Laplace transform of ft. You can find out the Laplace transform easily. fs is equal to e raised to power minus 2s. Why? Because delta t minus 1 is having the Laplace transform e raised to power minus s. The negative sign will be there. The negative sign will be there. And uh, here we have 1. So we had s. Here we have 2. So we have 2s. So in this way you can relate and you can easily solve the questions. And I will give you the complete list of transforms on our forum. So check the link given in the description. Now we will talk about the impulse response. Here impulse response is equal to delta t minus 1 plus delta t plus 1 and it is the impulse response for the system having this relationship. This means we have this system, we have this system having this relationship and in this system if you provide impulse as the input, the output will be ht and it is equal to delta t minus 1 plus delta t plus 1. But let me clear one important thing here. This system is LTI system because impulse response and transfer function is only written for LTI system. So from now onwards when I say the impulse response of the system it is automatic to understand I am talking about LTI system. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.